Hello, everybody. Welcome to Build Fly Go. So another good uh, work week uh, on the wings and finishing up these wings. So this is the uh, right wing. Uh, no, left wing. Sorry. <laughs> left wing. And we're riveting on the leading edge. We're going to hold off on the installing the tanks until we have our extended fuel tanks. We're waiting for them. Uh, supposedly, they're almost done, and they should be shipped at some point soon to us. So we'll we'll get those installed first and then put the tanks there. The uh, left tank still has the balloon on it. You can't see it. It's behind the wing right now. And the balloon is still inflated. I did get a little bit of a scare um, this week while uh, we were priming some parts and it was 30 degrees out, which uh, granted is too cold for priming. Um, and uh, the balloon deflated and uh, I panicked a little bit thinking maybe I had a leak. And uh, as soon as I closed the door and turned the heat back on, the balloon reinflated. So <laughs> we're all good there. It was just uh, the temperature making a difference. So as you can see, I am finishing up a couple of the other bits uh, that have been outstanding. Um, that's the right aileron right there. And um, I had primed uh, with some of the wing skins. I had also primed the, the right aileron spar and a couple of other bits. Um, so we're finishing that up, getting everything drilled so that we can rivet them um, in the next, uh, hopefully this coming week. Um, there are a couple of bits in the uh, ailerons and flaps that do still need to be um, primed. And uh, as you're going to see in the next next few minutes, we're going to get those primed as well. But lots of good progress here. Um, I'm, I'm pretty happy with how things have been going. It's unfortunately been getting pretty darn cold out. So it's been hard to get any priming done. So you'll notice that this week I've... Uh, made an effort to get as many things ready as I can uh, to get them primed because we had a couple of warm days. Um, I really don't like priming if it's lower than um, maybe 60 degrees out. Uh, the, the, the primer doesn't set. I don't know. It, it gets a little lumpy. <laughs> the What you're seeing here are the top skins for the right wing, which um, I needed to get primed, of course, and uh, the couple of push rods that I'm working on there as I've got some gaps in, in timing. Those are the aileron push rods. You see those little white things, little white sticks there. So we moved the left wing into the house and uh, pulled down the skeleton for the right wing, which was uh, actually behind the camera to the left. And um, those are the ribs that came with the, the three ribs that were missing that came with the fuselage kit, together with those skins that came with the fuselage kit. That fuselage kit. And uh, <clears throat> as you can see, uh, I had to bird all of these things. The ribs I had primed previously when I had a chance to prime things. Um, and uh, we've click cut everything on, and I'm just going through and drilling the, I don't know, like it's probably 300 holes there to, that need to be match drilled, and then have all the clicos moved and then match drilled again. It's, it's fairly tedious work, but uh, it, is, it is what it is. Uh, you'll notice that I'm doing this on the table. So with the RV-9, I did it on the rack, and I just propped to the bottom of the, the issue with the rack is it flexes. You can see that how it's flexed in the middle. So um, you need to sort of prop the middle up and push it up before you drill. And, um, and it worked fine doing it that way. The RV10 uh, manual suggests just doing it on table instead because then it won't flex. So we tried that, it worked well, no issues. Um, so pulled the skin off, deburring it. Now you can see me dimpling it on the table there. Again, reasonably tedious work. Um, basically, you got to pound a, a dimple into every single hole on the on those skins, so it's a, it's a couple hundred, a few hundred holes. You see those lines on the skins are where I deburred. Those are the inside of the skins, and uh, I had deburred using the um, Scotch Brite wheel <laughs> on the grinder. I found that the insides are much faster to deburr that way, and it's it's a really nice smooth deburring. So there we go. A lot of priming. Um, there is a priming video coming up. Um, I did record it. I need to do some editing and uh, I'll post it as uh, one of the how-to videos. I need to make more of those how-to videos. You guys seem to really like those. So um, I need to make an effort to make some more of those. 
Uh, here are more push rods, and you can see those are the uh, the gap seals, uh, the the blue. Yep, that I'm pulling the blue off now. They go. Uh, they're riveted to the spar and to the to the top skin at a 45 ish. 45-ish degree <laughs> angle. Um, and uh, again, it's it was a reasonably nice day out and I wanted to make sure to get these primed. Um, it did turn out, unfortunately, to get a bit cold as the, the day wore on. And uh, so I had to come back inside and not finish. The These push rods, um, you have to prime the insides of them as well. And I usually just fill them up with like I pour paint in or primer in, slosh it around and, and undo it. And this time I tried spraying and it worked okay. Um, I think I, I'm going to go back to the other method. But anyway, um, please subscribe, uh, hit the little bell. People tell me to hit the little bell. Uh, <laughs> thanks for watching. Have a great day.